Destructive thoughts, when we engage in them, we end up in doubt and confusion, overwhelmed fear. If you're having those experiences, what you know is you've engaged your visualization over here, and you're just having the autonomic response. That's what it feels like. So if that's in your life, just know you've created an expectation for how you'd like your life to be. Instead of focusing on creating that, you're living in frustration that it hasn't happened. That's it. This isn't complicated. Matter of fact, it's just science. And I'm so glad we have the youth here with us. I'm so grateful. Because if you could learn these principles at your age, you could save yourself decades of pain. Decades. My greatest concern about the youth, they're in such a visual, virtual world with text messaging and video games that they might lose touch with reality and the actual physical creation of a dream. Hi, Julie. Hi. Good to see you. Our destructive thoughts. If our work that we're doing is boring, mundane, repetitious, burdensome, hard, you know that you've been using your vivid visualization destructively. That's the evidence. If, however, we're involved in constructive thought, which is done five ways. I'll, I'm going to share with you just a little bit about each one of them tonight. And if you want to, you, you bought the book, you, you have it, John. Sure. You have the book. The book has an entire section on these five ways of using your mind to mentally rehearse, to seek inspiration, to explore, to problem solve and plan and goal set. That's what vivid visualization is designed to do. And when we use it that way, the power of creation, oh, oh, oh this, is, this is important. I put this slide in the last minute today. <laughs> wow, can you just bear with me for a moment? I gotta go back over here. Sometimes we don't like this. We would rather be here and beyond, right? but we're skipping all the work of creation. We're skipping the stretching and the growing and the becoming all we can become. There is no power of creation in the universe. I call that God. You can have whatever name you'd like for it. It doesn't matter because I can tell you how it works. It will never grant to you that which would rob you of the opportunity to stretch and grow and become all you're meant to be. When I said I long to cry to the God of my youth, but the God of my youth will not hear my cry, it's because I wanted to be rescued. And that power is saying, no, David, I want you to grow. I've got a mission for you. I want you to have a life of significance. Will it always be joyful in this process? No, sometimes it's going to be downright painful. Growth is sometimes painful. But when the growth occurs, it is always glorious and beautiful. It will never rob you of this opportunity. So don't spend any time at all asking the power in the universe to grant this. There are some who say, all you have to do is say, I'm worthy to receive. And the universe is stupid and it'll give it to you. It, first of all, it's not stupid. It loves you unconditionally unconditionally. And it would never rob you of that opportunity. So don't ask for it. Because you'll just end up being frustrated that it's not happening. And there are plenty of pundits who will support it. But I can tell you right now, their adherents are broke, broken, and angry. That's the truth. I just knew there was an answer. And I spent $20,000 for coaching. I know six months later, they're just going to be $20,000 poorer. And they often spend money they cannot afford to spend. Don't go there. It's a waste of money. When we think constructively, which means this, I want to grow. I want to create. I want to live a life of significance. What can I create? How could I create that? How would that serve? We will be shown this. This is very exciting. And when we are, 
If I had you wired to a functional MRI, guess what would happen? Part of your brain would light up that's normally dormant. That doesn't happen when we're escaping. It happens when we're seeking an inspired idea, an impression, and a solution to a challenge. When we're seeking that and we get it, everybody got this? You can't have a fantasy big enough to create this. It won't work. Your intentions, your real why, is to help us light up this part of our brain. And when this passion is ignited, it drives our focus, discipline, effort, and action to do whatever's required. We, we work without counting the cost or tracking the time. Whatever, whatever's required. Wow, I will fight through the mud, I'll fight through the rocks, I'll climb the mountains, I'll do whatever, I want that. That's what I want, I'll pay the price to get here. Because I've got the passion to drive it. I've got a story in the book about the last rewrite of the book. The book was going to the publisher on Monday and I just got home from speaking. And I was mentally rehearsing. And I saw it 70 pages shorter <laughs> than it was. And I trusted this. <sighs> Sunday night, just got back from a long weekend. Went in the office and wrote till sunup. Coached all day. Wrote till sunup. Coached all day. Wrote till sunup. Had an hour and a half of sleep Wednesday morning and Thursday morning. It's amazing what you can do when you're passion-driven, when you've got the vision. I don't suggest living without sleep. I just know how far you can push this if this is your intention. If your intention is to change a life, to move somebody, to create something powerful, you'll get the inspired idea. They're giving me a 10-minute sign, so let's go to work. <laughs> This is an assessment, and everybody can take one for free. Go to augmandino.com and take one. And when you do, you can double click on any measurement and find out what's happening in your thought processes. Left hand side, external world, people, tasks, discipline. On the right hand side, self esteem, joy in the journey, and mental creation, which is your source of vivid visualization, your source of motivation, inspiration. I'll just tell you this person. Can you see this measurement, goal-oriented? Tremendous ability to vividly visualize. Life is not showing up that way. They are hating their life. They're running around like a chicken with their head cut off. And they are beating themselves up. Because this is what happens. We create an expectation. Life doesn't show up that way. And as human beings, we turn inward and say, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with you. We just need to learn how to use this more effectively. Now we're gonna have some fun. I want everybody to pull out their tomahawk. That's your left hand. You ever got it? Pull out your tomahawk. Use your left hand. You won't need to write while we're doing this. Left hand, everybody ready? Now I'm gonna turn my back to you so you can see. Up there is fantasy. Down there is catastrophe. That dark dungeon, despair and discouragement. Can you see it over there? Got my tomahawk? You ready? Here we go. Repeat after me. Not going there today. I'm staying in creation. Now I equip my clients with tomahawks. I hear, I use it 75 times today. Oh, because the natural tendency is to want to escape or to go into this depression and discouragement. Not going there today. Can you feel it? Would you say it with me, that kind of energy? You ready? Not going there today. I'm staying in creation. Because one minute spent over there is going to impair you for hours. Ten minutes, ten hours. By the time the body releases cortisol and fear dendrites to bleed off your system, it will take 10 hours, 10 minutes. You don't have a minute. Anybody here got hours and days they can waste trying to figure out how to create their dreams? 
I don't think we do anymore. We need to get busy creating, and we can't go over there to do it. We want to go over here, and over here is mental rehearsal. It's as vivid as visualization, excuse me, vivid as fantasy, but instead of looking for a shortcut or an easier way, we're looking for a for direction, for a clear road. I'm going to have to turn you to the book. I brought plenty of them tonight for you. <laughs> Peter Vidmar won a gold medal in 1984. I was in Deer Valley with, with Kevin Hall and getting ready to help him release his book. Peter was there, a lot of other wonderful people. And Peter told us for 12 years he prepared for the Olympics five, six hours a day. Six days a week. Took off Sunday because that was his Sabbath. He remembered only 30 other days. 30 other days that he took off in that 12-year period. Can you imagine? And not once did he go one step beyond winning a gold medal. He never went to the Wheaties box, <laughs> the limousine, the Learjets, the, the Endor. He never went there. He stayed between there and here. And every day they turned the practice arena into the Olympic venue. When he was in the Olympic venue, he turned it into the practice venue. And guess what? He won the gold medal. Peter's one of the youngest members of the Speaker's Hall of Fame, as is Chad Hymas. Great guy, isn't he? Amazing human being. Great father. But not one step beyond gold medal, because nothing mattered if he didn't win. When's the last time you heard who won the bronze? Go back to 1984 and tell me who won the bronze. Who did? Doesn't matter. He wanted to win the gold because everything was contingent on this, whatever that might be for your life. There's a great story in the book about a client who was preparing for a meeting, a really ugly meeting. Anybody been to one of those meetings where you just, a couple days in advance, you got all the anxiety building up and you just feel like you're going to get your head handed to you in a hat basket, you know, one of those things. <gasps> she was in that space, and we mentally rehearsed the event. We went to the event in her mind and vividly lived it. Had her step into the worlds of each person, connect with each one of them, care about them. I had her visualize she saw a sack with three tomatoes. She was going to hand it to them. Here, if you don't like what I say, throw it at me. When she reported back, I said, what did you do with the tomatoes? She said, I went to the store, got the sack, bought the tomatoes, set them down by my chair. Did you use them? No. What happened to them? She said, I took them home and ate them. <laughs> but just the visualization helped put her in the right mindset. The meeting went beautifully. And she said, oh, Dave, I can't, I can't even imagine how many times I've gone into a meeting like that, needing to be right, defending my position, and the whole thing was a mess. And this was peaceful with a great resolution. That's mental rehearsal. Inspiration, very simple. If there's anyone I can serve, put them on my path and I'll serve them. If you did just this one thing, you could tie up this vivid visualization. Not going there today, I'm not. I'm gonna start thinking about someone who needs me. Me and my unique experience. How could I serve you? Mine came in an inspiration one day and Ramona knows this happens every day for us. Every day. I know at the end of the day who the person was. Somebody says, well, I'm surprised you talked to me. Well, I was supposed to. But I got this impression to talk to a friend. I hadn't talked to for a year and a half. And I called him on the phone. I said, how you doing? And he said, I'm doing great. So I said, then why? Can't I get your name off my mind? Been there all day long. First chance I had to call early afternoon where I had enough time to have a conversation. Silence is the friend of a listener. It's waited. You can almost hear the locks, the tumbles, you know. The door opened. He said, do you really want to know? I said, I'm here to serve. Yes. And he told me a horrific story. It was suffocating. And I'd felt that suffocation back in 1988 and 89 when everything we had was loaded in those moving vans and we're going away from our dream house. I remember that suffocating feeling. 
And I know what I wanted to do. So it just floated to the surface. And you trust it. How seriously are you considering suicide? And he said, that's all I've been thinking about. Tearfully. We got him on an airplane. He came up the next day and we spent some time together. He came to our home. You want to know the power of vivid visualization? That was the night he was going to do it. That's not always that dramatic. (laughs) But can you imagine the difference between that kind of vivid visualization? Who could I serve today? Name pops into your mind as vividly as a Ferrari. So instead of spending time with the Ferrari, you spend time, how can you serve? And everyone's fed. Everyone's fed. Listen for the whispers. And I wrote these words very specifically for you tonight. And take the assignment seriously. You see, when we're using our mind constructively to vividly visualize what can I create, how can I create it, how can I serve, we're in partnership with the power of creation. We have the same mission, to bless the lives of others. Doors open, opportunities show up. It's amazing how it works. You see, abundance is not something we win. It's not something that we seek to receive. It's a sacred process in which we actively participate and eventually become. And this is how we become it. Now, I'll save these for the books. We can explore possibilities without making tangible commitments. We can problem solve. Oh, your minds won't stop thinking till it's fixed. Just ask your wife, or maybe it's your husband, or maybe it's a friend or a coworker. These systemic thoughts just turn and turn and turn because the world's on tilt till it's fixed. We can use this to our advantage by assigning our mind a problem to solve. Just give it one it can solve. You'll wake up in the middle of the night with a solution. It's brilliant. That's a whole lot better than spending time over there in discouragement. Nothing is gained from that. Everything could be from this. I'm going to move on. Planning and goal setting. I want to show you this picture. That's Ramona and me at age 85. (laughs) I was looking for the picture. I found it. That's our vision, vivid visualization. You know where we're sitting? We're sitting on the, the front porch overlooking the lake at Bear Lake at our cabin. And I'm looking her in the eyes. And I know I've been faithful to her in every way. What is today? The 29th of September? You can create anything from this day forward. Very few people in relationships have a plan they're executing. Last weekend, Ramon and I were up at the cabin for our quarterly retreat. That's two days where we're doing planning and resting and we're just together. There are activities that we do every day, every week, every month, every quarter, and every year. These 38 years have been intentionally created. And you can too. In your businesses, just one comment for the night. When you figured out how much money you want to make, convert it to the number of lives you'll need to impact. Divide it by the number of months and weeks in the year, and then focus on impacting the lives. Because when the lives have been in fact impacted, what happens to the income? It's there. It's a natural outcome. It's not the focus, it's the outcome. Well, it's time for us to become an intentional creator of our life. I got up at four o'clock in the morning and wrote till eight o'clock in the morning for four years, driven by a desire to address those who have been saying to me, David, I can almost touch it, I can almost taste it. Why can't I have it? 
because you want to learn how to use your vivid visualization constructively. Then you'll ignite ideas and impressions and solutions to challenges. It'll ignite your passion. You'll take the action because nobody gets to skip the action. Nobody gets to skip the action. The work of creation is a requirement. It's either boring, mundane, repetitious, and burdensome because we're over there playing in the future, or it's vision, mission, and passion-driven. The choice is ours, and it depends on how we use our mind. I'll share this with you tonight. You've got some great people here with wonderful books. You want to leave tonight with books to read. My book comes with a CD. Anybody know Og Mandino? Anybody studied Og Mandino? In the back is a CD of Og narrating the 10 scrolls from the greatest salesman in the world. We recorded that the year, I didn't record it, but it was recorded the year that he passed away, 1996. It's so great to have it. That's part of the book. I want you to have one of those tonight. They're 20 bucks. This was a, a moment, a mental rehearsal. I'm mentally rehearsing when I was first releasing the book. I said, how can I get this in the hands of people? I know people are in trouble. And the impression I got was, have people buy 10 copies of the book. It was 200 bucks. Now go give nine of them away to someone who needs these principles. Now you get to work with me on helping bless lives, right? As a thank you, I invite you to attend a Tuesday night coaching call at 6 p.m. Mountain Time where I will walk you through every chapter of the book. I'll tell you the backstories. I'll tell you how to imply, implement the principles in your life, the practices, processes. It's a coaching session. And it's off mute. In other words, you can comment. You can participate. It's free. It's a free coaching session. Now, when I got that impression, I said, what a dumb idea. And then I remember where these things come from. <laughs> This turned out to be a really fun idea because there are a lot of people who can't afford a coach. You want to hire me for six months? It's $10,000. I'll be happy to engage your life and take it on, and it'll be worth every penny you spend, but most don't have that available. But they could do this. You want to go a little further? You can take the assessment, and I'll spend an hour to an hour and a half with you going through the measurements. Let's find out where you are. What thought processes are you having? They're all unique to you. Let's find out where you want to do your work. Then we will turn on your intentional creation studio. It's an online learning center with 30 hours of downloadable material. And then you will join me for 52 weeks of group coaching that's done live on a video. I mean, you turn on your computer and you watch it. I teach you these principles. It takes about 10 weeks to get through them. There are six of them. Connection with people, using your mind constructively, being present in the now and passion-driven action, being disciplined and structured, enjoying the journey and healing your self-esteem. That's what we do. We could go through that five times in the next year. Do you think by then you'd figure it out? Absolutely. The studio is $500, the assessment's $300. The group coaching is about 500, and tonight I put a little together something I thought would be fun. I gave the coaching away for free. So if you want to have the assessment, you want to have the material in the studio, you get to come to the coaching for free for a year, if that would be a value. If you're in a position to do that, don't use mortgage money to do this. I don't want the mortgage money. But if you really want to get serious, it'll be fun spending time with you. Last and in closing. When Og was writing the Ten Scrolls in Scroll 9, after he's told us all these wonderful principles, he opens it up with this, my dreams are worthless. That could take your breath away. My plans are dust. My goals are impossible. All are of no value unless they're followed by action. Only action determines my value in the marketplace. That's not only the market's value of me, but it's my value of me in the market, too. To increase my value, for me, too, this is healing self-esteem. I must increase my actions. I will walk where the failure fears to walk. I will talk when the failure remains silent. I will work when the failure seeks rest. 
That's powerful. I'll call on 10 who can buy my goods while the failure makes grand plans to call on one. I'll say it's done before the failure says it is too late. I will act now. If I can be of service to you in any way, I would love to. Whatever you do, don't go home tonight and be the same on Monday. We don't have time. It is time to act. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night.